So we perceive that the uh, electric propulsion technology used in modern drones, and especially among uh, adopters of PX4, is kind of stagnating. And we perhaps could offer a solution to this. Um, I'm going to start with the basics, and uh, around the middle of the presentation, I'm going to explain how is it related to PX4. So, on this picture, you can see Noah. He is launching an ancient drone to find land during the Great Flood. Obviously, the effort wasn't very successful because this particular piece of ancient technology, which some of you may recognize, cannot boast uh, sufficient endurance. So, that was quite unfortunate. And why is that? because the energy resources available on board are kind of are extremely scarce because of the uh, shortcomings of modern battery technology. And uh, briefly, we can um, show the energy conversion pipeline like this. Major losses occur in the motor controller and uh, in the motor itself. And at Zubax, we were able to develop a new motor control technology which allowed us to reduce energy losses in the controller and in the motor uh, by 9 to 15 percent, depending on the baseline, depending on what you compare it against, uh, which is quite substantial because that brings us very close to the theoretical limit. And this, uh, this improvement is possible thanks to new digital signal processing techniques that we have developed uh, in-house. Uh, this, this table outlines uh, a basic test that we have conducted. Uh, basically, we took our technology, um, a integrated drive based on our solution. We just lifted it uh, this on the left. We call it Sadulte Grossa. And uh, on the, the competitor was uh, a product, uh, was a propulsion system, a particular configuration that was used by one of our customers. So it's a very, very practical test. And you may see that both solutions uh, leverage the same propeller, which is important because it uh, ensures that uh, the comparison is, uh, the, the propeller does not affect the, the end result of the test. And this is the test rig. Uh, our integrated drive, Sadule Grosso, the red one, installed onto a test, uh, a test bench manufactured by uh, RC Benchmark. And this is the competitor. Uh, again, looks pretty standard. And the results of that particular test are staggering you can see that uh, there is a very substantial difference in energy efficiency and practically that means that uh, any drone that is based on obsolete uh, propulsion technology can benefit of increased uh, endurance by simply swapping its propulsion hardware from legacy to a solution rendered by us. So that is something that should be kept in mind. Uh, also, vibration is an important, fact, important factor, uh, and uh, vibration is caused not only by mechanical disbalance, but also, in certain cases, by vibrations induced by the drive itself. Um, and that is particularly important for the uh, for PX4 adopters. Last year, we ran a survey with drone code which I've already mentioned during my previous presentation. It was very insightful. And by the way, we can share results of the survey if you care about it. Uh, and it revealed that the vast majority of uh, PX4 adopters actually uh, leverage obsolete uh, motor control technology, which means that uh, many, many companies represented by people present here could possibly benefit seriously from our, uh, from our technologies. But it will be unfair to compare our solution against, uh, against uh, obsolete technology. So here's another comparison. Uh, some of you may know that uh, DJI E2000 is a pretty advanced product based on state-of-the-art uh, motor control technology developed by Texas Instruments. It is known as InstaSpin. And actually, it's a, the same technology is used by some other vendors. And uh, we can show quite significant uh, improvements in um, energy conversion efficiency. You can see the power levels at the bottom. Uh, the, the rotor speed was identical for both tests, and we can show that our solution dissipates uh, less power, which again enables higher endurance. So, 
such obsolete technology is well, it's well known that it was used uh, for construction site inspections, such as, for example, this photograph was taken in ancient Egypt, where this uh, ancient drone leveraging uh, six-step commutation technology was used for site inspection. I know that 3DR has really improved this, uh, this, uh, this particular um, domain since then. But this is not what modern drones look like. Modern drones look like this. This is one of our customers. Um, some of you may have heard about this company. They leverage PX4 as well. One of, their, uh, one of the most important uh, features of this product is its flight time. They've reached uh, the endurance metrics of uh, two hours without payload, and uh, I believe it's one hour, 18 minutes with uh, payload, which is which is significant. And it's, uh, it's important to keep in mind that this outstanding product is based on our propulsion technology. So other vendors are unlikely to be able to develop an equivalently capable solution in-house because uh, motor control is very hard and uh, development of a custom motor control solution requires substantial investment. So what we are offering basically is um, an integrated circuit, an integrated solution, uh, like a module which can be built in into your custom propulsion hardware, allowing any electrical engineer without uh, prior experience with motor control applications to relatively easily build a sophisticated motor control unit. Uh, the idea is that 90% uh, of complexity of uh, motor control of motor control application is hidden inside uh, the, the software and uh, digital signal processing circuits, whereas uh, the uh, power electronics itself is quite simple. Again, same idea uh, demonstrated here on this uh, on this chart. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we basically allow uh, uh, vendors of uh, modern vehicles to leverage advanced technology, but at the same time reduce uh, time to market. This is what it looks like. Uh, the, the PX4 page that you all received a few days ago. Uh, it's uh, for scale here, and uh, this is the module at the bottom. Uh, we're going to actually demonstrate it a bit later. Uh, you can approach this table during the lunch break, which is supposed to happen right after this presentation, and we're going to show you the, the, the hardware. So some people might mistakenly believe that uh, this uh, unit, this, this module is heavy, but the reason for that is very simple. It is very uh, integrated. It uh, contains the, obviously the microcontroller, uh, motor control uh, software, digital signal processing algorithms, uh, signal conditioning circuits, uh, transistor driver, DC-DC converter, and it's very integrated. So its uh, size is uh, justified. And as you will see soon uh, in a later section of this presentation, uh, it's uh, quite, quite flexible. So on, on, the, on, the, on the part of reliability, I should uh, also emphasize some of our non-technical features. Uh, every unit that we manufacture uh, is equipped with a manufacturing test log, which is available online. Majority of uh, components uh, are qualified by ACQ 100-200. We obviously provide uh, double redundant UEV CAN and uh, legacy RCPWM as well. And there are some uh, data recording features uh, that are to be available later. This video briefly demonstrates how our solution can support um, basically arbitrary BLDC motors uh, by means of uh, automatic identification. I wish I could scroll it. So the video is a bit sped up. Um, what we are showing here is uh, the straightforward process of installation of uh, our graphical user interface, which allows you to connect to the motor controller, to the uh, to its firmware, identify the uh, connected motor, uh, 
that's basically a fully automated uh, system identification. Uh, from this step, our motor control system learns the properties of the motor and adjusts itself for optimal performance. Here we are connecting to the motor, uh, configuring some basic parameters such as the number of poles and the uh, rate of current, and everything else is deduced automatically. We just launch motor identification. We wait a few minutes. We still wait. We wait a bit more. And when it's done, it's ready to go. Very minimal manual tuning is required, if required at all. And we provide full stack of solutions starting with integrated modules up to complete integrated drives with uh, motors and propellers in one product, which obviously come pre-tuned and pre-configured. And as I said, we support legacy interfaces as well, so our propulsion systems are usable in legacy systems as a drop-in replacement. So, now my colleague Alexander is going to briefly outline our, uh, the advantages of our open hardware reference designs, which are licensed under Creative Commons uh, share alike version 4.0 meaning that basically they can be uh, leveraged arbitrarily in custom designs. Okay, okay. test, test, is it working? No, it's good. Should I not? It's green? Yes? It's good. Nice. So as Pavel said, there are two main approaches to drive BLDC motors. The classic one, which is six-step commutation and was invented like 300 years ago and is used everywhere now. And the modern one. The modern approach is sinusoidal control it is much more complex, it requires much uh, software effort, but it brings advantages of high efficiency and lower parasitic effects like vibrations, audible noise, and so on. And let's focus on designing the latter one type of EAC, because there is no point in doing something that was done 100 times. Uh, I am, I guess, the only one person in the world who has an opportunity to design something using mitochondrial models that Pavel was talking about before. And I can assure you, it's pretty simple. It is much simpler than designing the whole EC from, from scratch. Here you can see the lowest, powerful, the lowest power rated ESC based on mitochondria. And the purpose of the thing is to demonstrate that it can be pretty compact. This thing has uh, dimensions of basically of a module. It's a bit, a little bit bigger than the module, and it can be uh, embedded into like FPV racers or something like that. Also, we have uh, a bigger one design. This is called Sadulli. This is, in fact, an integrated drive and should include a motor on top of that, but obviously here it isn't. And it, it is a very simple design as well. It consists basically of a couple PCBs, one is a connector PCB for mitochondria and just a power stage with some MOSFETs and capacitors, nothing more. Pretty simple. And also we got a bigger one design. It looks similar, but uh, if Sadulli is rated for about 500 watts of continuous power, this one it's a bit bigger and is rated for up to 2 kilowatts. So you can get about 20 kilos of thrust with this thin and proper motor and proper propeller. And again, the design is super simple. Basically, a module and a bunch of fats, nothing else. So I must say that uh, all these designs usually take about from two to three weeks to design and uh, require absolutely zero software effort. And uh, it usually requires maybe max two hardware rev revisions to, to get you running. You can uh, come and see and touch all these designs here on the table. They are not that big. <laughs> you can see them from, from the distance. Well, basically, that's it. Uh, any questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> Like 
metrics, any performance metrics, because for multicopters it's very important to have fast reaction times of the motor and high torques. Yes, indeed. And these lead usually to less efficiency. So the reason we didn't include them because they're comparable to the current state of the art and they are sufficient for modern applications, so there is uh, not much to show. But if you're interested, we can actually share the detailed data from that experiment uh, freely. If you could just email at us at uh, info at zubox.com, we can just share uh, raw data sets. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Thank you, guys.